Hello there, I'm Pace Weikamp, and today I'm in the studio with Jake Huber, the Indianapolis based director. Jake, thank you so much for coming to hey, Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. So, do you mind for people who don't, aren't really aware of your work kind of introducing yourself? Yeah, for sure. Uh, my name is Jake Huber, uh, born and raised here in Indianapolis. Um, I think people uh, know me best for kind of documenting the music scene here, um, and lately, in the past like three years, I've been like solely directing music videos in town. Okay. It's cool. So I kind of want to paint the picture off for people that aren't, like I said, aren't too much aware of what you're doing. So when did you first start getting into directing and that kind of stuff? Um, so I've always been in the arts, um, just with painting, drawing, stuff like that. And then I went to school for photography. Where did you go to school? I went to IU. Okay. Yeah. And then I ended up double majoring in uh, telecom and kind of learning film stuff because like on top of everything, I would always like film video clips with my DSLR and mess around with stuff, but never did anything like super serious. But um, I got my foot in the industry after college in reality TV. And from there, I moved back to Indy and I started going to shows and just meeting people. And that's when I decided to just like give it a shot. So did you, were, were you into it like when you were younger though, before you even went to school or? I definitely taking photos of bands and stuff like that. Okay. This music's always been a huge part. But then life. it evolved once you went to art school to actually like working and doing that kind of stuff. Right. And by, by the way, how old are you? I didn't. I'm even... 27. 27. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So you've been doing it basically since you got out of school and just yeah, and working and working. Yeah. Um, let me see. So did you always? Was this something you always wanted to do after school? Did you know like I want to direct music videos and I want to? You know, I just uh, really wanted to learn more about like the film industry and I really want to work just in TV which that's what I do full time gotcha. and then uh, like eventually like work on movies and I don't know just kind of be around something and learn from a lot of like film people gotcha yeah. so right out of school was that did you start with the music video? I mean who were some of the people uh, you first started working with um I was going to um square cat vinyl a lot and those the guys on that are really cool. Um, shout out to Mike Angel. Um, he's a great guy. I should have him on here. Mike Angel? Yeah. Um, and he's in a band <coughs> called Bigfoot Yancey. Um, and they have like a hip hop night. And I started filming like one or two songs per act, like multi cam with like a Zoom recorder, just so the audio is like halfway decent. And then I started like networking with the hip hop community here. Um, and that community pretty much like. I've said in the past has kind of welcomed me with open arms. I haven't really met a single like sh uh, crappy person. Al almost caught me there, um, but uh, yeah, everybody's been really, really chill so, and thankful for like yeah. And you know, like we, the appreciation is felt both ways. So was the Square Cat people were they one of the first ones that got you into that? Uh, I gotta make sure I do this right. The music in transit. Uh, so that was um, also very thankful for Mike Angel, who we just mentioned. Uh, he had a friend, Lauren Day, who was an awesome person, and she works at Indigo. And when the red line uh, got announced, um, Indigo is just doing different campaigns just to promote it, get in people's ears. And the Arts Council of Indianapolis, Square Cat, and then a bunch of other people um, all got together and kind of sponsored this event where we bring like Indy's best to perform kind of like unplugged. And well, actually, it was actually full plugged in uh, on the But you literally did it on a bus like, yeah. each week. The original idea was to be like, oh, how sick would it be? Um, there's like a French live music like sessions thing called Late Blog Attack where they would follow like big indie rock bands like, like St. Vincent and the Growlers just all around like Paris and they'd be playing live and it'd be like single cam, one shot, one take like pristine audio, like beautiful stuff. So originally we were like, oh, how sick would it be to bring these bands on a, like a moving bus, but with like insurance and just like the general liability of just like, like trying to play music, you know, or someone or on my crew would for sure die. We're all clumsy. Yeah. But um, we decided, just, you know, we should just park it in front of Square Cat, kind of make it semi like closed, like a private event, but the doors would be open. Like if there is space, yeah, of course, come on and interact. Um, and so that was a lot of fun. I got to work with Duran Jones and Indications, which are from Bloomington, and they're like effing sick. That's awesome. Yeah. So how many weeks did you do that for? 
that um, it was two phases. So the stuff that you've seen on the bus, that was about it was a three day shoot. Yeah, and it took place over like two weeks. So cool. Yeah, that's super super yeah. cool. So I guess I kind of want to jump now into the music videos and that kind of thing. That's kind of more of like a focus for the interview because I mean I'm just an absolute huge fan of your work. It was just seeing the stuff you do and. So how, with these music videos, you have a different theme almost every single time. For sure. What, why do you do that? I mean, just to stay unique and that kind of thing? Or is it more of um, song to song, you like to change themes? It's, it's, it's different. I would say most of the time I have an idea and I kind of pair it with an artist that either I like discover that's local or just someone I know already that I've seen a million times. And whenever, I'll just say, I'll just call them all my friends. Yeah, of course. They are, yeah. but like when they put out new music, I always make sure to either, you know, stream it or buy it, and I'll listen to everything, and if something really, like, clicks in my head, um, I'll write something up and be like, hey, what do you think? And usually, people are just like, alright, just do whatever, yeah. just make it happen. You so know? you have a certain idea from the start? I think, yeah, most of the time, yeah. So, so some people kind of come to me and they're like, hey, I got this idea for a video, and uh, that's great and stuff, and, but my workflow is kind of weird and different. Yeah. Um, you know, usually people like storyboard stuff out and take a lot of like a lot of time for pre-production and stuff. I'm very like, I don't know, the, not the right term, but like photographic memory almost. I just can, I can have it pictured in my head it and you yeah, just do it, and I can just like make it happen, which is yeah. That's crazy you can make that happen because they're such unique ideas. Like the mother uh, mother boy, I'm, is that their name? Uh, right. Mother folk. Mother folk. Yes. Yeah. That, I mean that whole pink room thing yeah. and the mula Khan with like the dinner table with the guy's head on. Just like yeah. that's crazy that you can make. For sure. So something like that yeah. happen. The Mula Khan video, um, oh man, I forget what, a couple things inspire me. I watched that Steve Carroll movie, Dinner for Schmucks. Yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> that, I remember I watched that with my girlfriend, um, and I was like, oh man, like a kind of a messed up dinner party would be pretty cool. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, what would, what would be the twist? And I was like, oh, Head on a Platter would be cool. That's just, that's crazy because it's, I'm trying to understand really how the setting you choose can reflect the music you're shooting for. Like, I mean, for like Sunday with Hail Mary, yeah, it was kind of a rap song, but we were in a honky tonk. Right, like, right. We were, I mean, how do you? What goes through your mind to blend genres like that and get different locations, even if it's not necessarily for that genre? You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, a while back, I got asked to do a different video for different artists who are friends with Stamps, and I pass it on to my friend. But their theme was like, uh, like cowboys versus aliens, like sci-fi meets western. Yeah. And I was like thinking about it, and I kind of was like, oh, a saloon video would be cool. And I remember my friends, her friends with stamps, um, or like, oh man, stamps wants to do like a western type of video. And I was so I really was like, man, you gotta do this right. And right. it turns out he's friends with the uh, owner of Dukes. Which if you haven't gone there, you should definitely go. Dukes is really good food badass. and good drinks if you're at age, um, and it's just really cool atmosphere. Neon signs, like I don't know if you like that whole honky tonk vibe. It looks it's so cool. good with the lighting too, the way sure. they did with the blue lights. Yeah, and stuff. I mean that was very very cool. Yeah. So I'm just kind of also trying to wonder, which are some of your favorite places to shoot in? Do you have do you go try to do a new place every time? Yeah, or? for sure. A lot of people like a lot of music videos. If you, I'm just gonna like speak like for hip hop videos, really. A lot of, like you call it run and gun, where you just mm -hmm. pull up right in front of the studio and shoot yeah, someone rapping and, 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 and just go yeah. down down the street, and you know, and it's like cut between three to four locations, and there's really nothing beyond that. Right. Um, you know, and I've done that in the past. I'm, I plan on doing that like one or two times this year, just just to keep it fresh because usually during those times you kind of work out of your comfort zone and you kind of get creative on the spot which is cool but um favorite spots to shoot in the city I don't know a lot of the stuff that probably that you've seen that you like are, are built in the studio yeah. there's, there's like a handful of studios in town that and you just build it there literally just yeah, do the whole you thing rent, and kind you of like rent these wall flats and you put them up and you like yeah you tape them up and paint them and kind of Make, make your space. That's really, really, really cool. I never yeah. knew that's how you did kind of studio like that. I thought it was always a location or something oh, like that. Yeah, probably most of the videos you've seen are built rooms. Um, but a bit like that honky tonk bar was, oh, that yeah. was badass. It was super, super cool. You know, I really like, I prefer 
going to a spot that's already like right and then i mean especially you kind of added to the aesthetic of you had i mean i can even distinguish between who were like extras and who were like right. regulars out right there was like there were regulars there which yeah. was kind of funny those bikers that, yeah those bikers yeah, yeah that was pretty crazy yeah <laughs> yeah well shout out yeah shout out that uh yeah. toothless biker gave me a free budweiser and they were some yeah. very nice guys right on. but okay so are there any places you'd like to go film or try travel to any places in your mind that stand out as like i want to go here and i want to shoot here like eventually uh man i'm always open just to going somewhere and shoot um i think just maybe within the last year i kind of have this like mentality that i want to people outside of the state to see my work and want to come here uh, to shoot something. Like being able to kind of just yeah. paint indie in a certain way with your videos and kind of give an insight to yeah. the culture? Yeah, because I can do a lot here with my resources and stuff. And right. I have a lot of friends who can help me out, you know, and like the costs stay like relatively low. Because I mean, know? yeah, you use, I'm going to jump into this more, in but, more detail yeah. in a bit, but like you use the same people, correct? Like, I mean, like, you use uh, no, the same yeah. people. Yeah, I, I use a lot of different people yeah. actually. Oh. Um, well, I mean, everybody that I use is in the film community here. So they can be booked, you know, they could be out of state, they can be doing a TV show somewhere. But like so, a good amount of people are like friends and that kind right, of thing. Right, yeah, everybody knows each other, everybody's friendly, so be good yeah. for just making sure you can kind of have continuous quality in that sure. kind of stuff. Yeah, and you know, if it's, if it's a bigger budget thing, certain more people want to attach their names to that, or if it's just like a good idea, I don't know, it's different different strokes for different folks, you yeah. know. So, you, I mean, you list very, like, especially whenever you release a music video, you have a list and description of all these people. How do you put together a team to make this happen? Like, lighting, all this kind of stuff. Do you use, like, rental companies? Do you just... Um, yeah, so everything you... And possibly imagine goes in the video requires a person mm. so there's a lighting person and there's people who build the lights people who rig the lights people who tear down the lights it's all a grip and electric department and there's a grip and electric company in town that do I, I do a lot of trade outs so companies that make their own lights or um, have their own services I do Instagram trade outs or I do behind the scenes photography like recaps just to make the community here realize these people yeah. exist and you should hire them and like user services um but yeah i mean so you usually you kind of focus on the concept of mutual benefits of right like being yeah just like you want to expand this community yeah when people see a jaykeeper video it's like 13 people you know right. it's not just me it's a yes yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of in, in a way it's such a big production like i mean I, that was my first time on a real like music video on sunday when i came yeah. to the hail mary and just seeing all the people like working together like that and like even though it is kind of a smaller group of people, it seems yeah. so big, and actually, you can really make a scene come to life yeah. just with a certain demographic right. and a certain amount of people. And that's I really, really appreciated that on your shoot. It was really, really cool. Yeah, sure. Um, so, what's it like for you being kind of a younger guy and having these artists that you're working with and stuff and running a set? Um, is, is it do you find any troubles with it, or does it usually run smooth? No, yeah, only just financially, it sucks, and a lot of things. You know, everything costs money. That's the only shitty part, or uh, crappy part, sorry, bleep that out. Um, but uh, that's the only bad part. Um, I love the social aspect, I love meeting people, um, and I like really everybody, for the most part, has been like really respectful and thank me, like appreciated. Keep supporting and, you and what you're and, doing. And those are the people thing. I continually work with. That's why you see that I've done three Vulcan videos, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I continue working with people, and hopefully we, we both grow, the artist and myself together, because one of these videos might take off, and people are like, yeah. oh, who made that video? And like, who, who's the artist in that song, you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, do these artists reach out to you again and again, usually? Like, on, like an artist, like, yeah. I can't react to you, and be like, I loved what you did, like, I don't know. let's do something I'm else. Just, I just, I'm, just, I'm just like homies with them. It's yeah. like, we don't even talk video stuff really. Like we'll just text every once in a while. So it really isn't like a touch. commercial thing. It's like a. Not really. It really yeah. just comes down to a friendship and just like yeah, being like cool. Artists. Yeah. If they have new stuff, they'll be like, "Hey, check this out. Let me know if you can think of anything." You know, and it's not super deep if I can't. You know, or if life is busy. You know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you mentioned earlier. I just kind of wanted to dive into this more. So what exactly for HGTV and the reality show are you? doing so I'm in, the, yeah, I'm in the camera department on a reality TV show called Good Bones and this is your Good Bones really yeah that's yeah. interesting yeah. my mom was on one of those episodes she's an interior designer she was on this one with like these two sisters or something like that and 
that she's a huge fan of the show. Oh, cool. That's really, really cool that yeah. you're doing that. She was on an episode? She was on an episode. They oh. featured some of her work and that okay. kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. I don't know how long ago, but I'll have to ask her to follow oh. up. That's definitely something Was she after. on camera? I don't know. Okay. That's that's another question I'll have to ask her. It's a long, it was a long time ago. Okay. But I just remember, like, that, that sounds very familiar. We'll so, talk about it later. So of course. I definitely probably met her. So you're doing camera work yep, for do, this? Yeah. Is, is that kind of your day job? That day job, pay bills yeah. And that kind of thing? Yeah. Like, see, I'm full time. I'm like six days a week. Like, definitely five days a week, no matter what. Um, work 12 hour days. Or, you know, it's crazy. Right. A lot of people think I'm crazy for how I balance things out. That's, yeah, I was about to kind of off this conversation. I want to dive. How do you do that? <laughs> it, yeah, it's uh, it takes a lot. Um, it definitely was about two years of being this kind of always staying busy, like yeah. trying hard. And it's, it's starting the show, which is really good. Right. Um, like, you you like reach out, like people like people reach out to me, which is really good. Um, my girlfriend's been really, really, uh, really patient, you know? She, yeah. she works also with me on the TV show, okay. and she's like an art director, so she builds sets and stuff, so it's really good. So she, does she help you yeah, also she with did, like, all your videos? She, she like built that mother folk room, the pink room. Uh, Serious black video where you see him being operated on. Yeah, she built a hospital room. Like, so yeah, cool. she, she does uh, really awesome stuff. So she's a huge part of your yeah. whole thing. Yeah, for sure. All that stuff. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I guess I kind of just so you, I mean you've worked with artists like Serious Black, Motherfolk, Mulakan, Draco McCoy, Poindexter, and a ton yeah. more. Are there any that stick out as some of your personal favorites or any certain videos that you found yourself being extremely proud of? Everybody has like their own personality and everybody's awesome. Um, but I. Love, I really enjoyed working with Baby Ebony. Um, we had a video two years ago called Euphoria, and I think it's like still one of my favorite videos. We like bought a Cadillac and we crashed it into a house. Oh on, you know, it's like part of the video, and he gets like dragged out, and there's an ambulance. It's like he's like drinking and driving the entire video. Oh my gosh! So, yeah, it was it was like super fun because we were just driving downtown like idiots. Like, don't do any of this, by the way, don't people. Do like, learn from my mistakes. Um, it wasn't fun at all, and I regret it every uh, every day we did it. But uh -huh. it, was, it was awesome. Oh, for sure, it was badass. So yeah, you, you do a lot of stunts. It seems like, and in, in these things. I mean, we on Sunday there was glass being broken overhead, like yeah. a driving thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you do those kind of nitty gritty shots? Uh, that those bottles are like fake glass. Well, yeah, of course. Shot, I, know, but I, just mean, I don't know. I just like I like violence and like white trash and like I don't know. I just think it's I'm like I love comedy I like humor or like dark humor so yeah, of course, I, I, I try to throw that whenever I can and you mix that just with like all the videos and that kind of thing. yeah yeah um so what can people expect from you in 2020 um hopefully I will be working with some big names I don't want to curse myself and, yeah. and drop names like we can after the cameras uh, cut you know mm -hmm. classified yeah. stuff yeah. but um, uh, I really just want to challenge myself and make some stuff I didn't expect I could make. Um, I'm going to dabble in um, what they call like spec commercials, which are just like fake, making fake ads okay. that you can like eventually pitch to your, pitch to other companies and like, hey, okay, I can make a Viagra commercial. Right. And, yeah, and, yeah, you know check what I mean? And out. Like, check out this fake one. <laughs> but like, I don't know, I just want to start doing that. I need to work out of my comfort zone. Um, so you're trying to expand more from just the music videos? Yeah, it only goes so far. Um, making a living off music videos is very, very hard to do. For sure. Very rare. Um, and I just want to try to flex on other things and see if I can do it. Of course, yeah. yeah. I'm sure challenge myself. Yeah, I mean, if you, you've got that experience, if you can, if you're able to harness that style you already have for the music videos mm -hmm. into like, cool advertising stuff, I feel like, I mean, unique advertisements are becoming more and more, yeah. people don't want to see the same crap of just yeah. like, your standard commercials, I think, I think that would be a really, really good option. I should see crap more, I think crap, crap yeah, we'll, just, we'll, we'll stick with that, we'll right. stick with that. You've done that. <laughs> <laughs> so any releases you have coming up, I mean, I know we mentioned the Hail Mary by Johnson, yeah. that was recorded Sunday, mm -hmm. um, do you have any details on that release? Uh, we have one shot left, we have a mechanical bowl set up, nice. yeah, so that's going to be fun. That's so cool. Um, so hoping that we can get that knocked out in the next week. Um, I have a video with this artist, Lil Toe, if you... Lil uh, I think you, you've yeah. worked with him before, correct? Uh, yeah, that video is going to drop pretty soon. He's just kind of like a, a meme rapper. I don't know. He's hard to... You should just look him up. Like spend, spend like an hour just like researching him. It, it's funny. He found me on Instagram and 
uh, he's just like, I'll, I'll fly out there, and, and I was like, okay, cool, and we did it, and he stayed at the Conrad Hotel, nice. he like never takes the mask off, but he's like really, really cool, and he's part of like the sketch comedy group, or he sh like showed up in a few skits for the sketch comedy group I like, um, and he's just a funny dude, and I like his music, so. Gotcha, so are there any people, I mean, I know we kind of mentioned there's people you're kind of planning to work with on this, but are there people that you would specifically like want to work with in um, Indy or anywhere else? Man, yeah, I like, uh, we're supposed to be, when the time's right and the money's right, um, there's an artist here named Tragic, um, we, he's like a screen actor skilled actor, I mean he's like this uh, really, really good rapper, um, and then he's been on, uh, oh man, Major like cable network shows. So he's a, he's a big name. He's, he's, yeah, he's a big name here. Um, he should be bigger, I think. Um, so really, you find there's a lot of trouble with that in India, though. Yeah. Like, so many people yeah. that should be like, oh, it's just it's yeah. frust it's so frustrating. It's slept on out here. Oh, like, but, big uh, time. Definitely him. Um, I do want to. There's like, I want to dabble in like singer songwriter people. Like maybe another band or two. Um, we're gonna do another Mother Folk video, which nice. actually one half of the video will be on an uh, airplane. Oh, that's like cool. a parked airplane. Oh, that's super so cool. that's going to be... That's and that video something. is beautiful. Just the, Yeah, it's, it's, that is super simple, beautiful. but fun. Yeah. Right, and all that pink and just like all the like frames and stuff. It's yeah. just, that's a great video. And that's like, that's based off their album art. I was, I re I've seen them, I've shot them live when they, they're from Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. So uh, when they came here, I shot them live like twice. And I was like, man, it'd be fun just to do just a performance-based video, but cool set. So I'm so, glad we have to do that. That's awesome, man. So I guess before we kind of wrap things up, I just kind of wanted to ask you about, has Indianapolis just always been a home to you? Is this, what makes you stay here? What makes you stay in Indy, other than building up the artists themselves and that kind of stuff? What makes you want, is there, is there a deep passion you have for building up Indy culturally? Or what, what makes you want to stay around? I've seen a lot of people like come together and like meet um, through my shoots and I think that's really special. Um, I'm here for my job and after that's done I, I don't know where I will go but it'll be uh, not here but um, I just want to continue pursuing things. I hope that Indiana provides opportunities for me to stay and just keep uh, making money um, but you just I mean, this applies to all sorts of different professions. Of course, you know? it's just it's mostly all in Indianapolis. Yeah, yeah there's I mean, just not enough. If you're a musician here, like you're probably gonna move to Chicago or Nashville. Right. You know, like it's it's hard, but if you can make a living here doing what you love, then you're doing it right. You know. Um, so I'm hoping the show I'm on just people are loving it and uh, I just yeah enjoy the company I work for and the people I work with and. Just hope it stays that way. Definitely. Well, Jake, I appreciate it. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we leave this interview? No, I'm good. I appreciate you uh, reaching out. Of course. No, it's a pleasure. I had fun, too. Yeah. That was a pretty that was That shoot was shoot. insane. Yeah. And it was so cool. I mean, the, the, or they, they had a live horse on this on this yeah. set. I mean, yeah. they, Whiskey Joe, correct? Yeah, Whiskey Joe. Yeah. Shout, Shout out to Whiskey Joe. And Stan was such a great... Person. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's got a cool he, look. He wants to do an interview as well, and I, I'm really gonna try to jump on it because he's just yeah. such a nice guy. Like he was just so friendly to everyone on set. Very just cool. Really, yeah. really great dude. Yeah, for sure. So please shout out your social media before we kind of wrap up, where people can follow your stuff. Yeah, just on Facebook, Jake Huber. I got like a artist page on there, um, or just my personal one, and then Instagram is where you'll catch me just being a fool all the time, and that's underscore Jake Huber, my name. And you'll find me on there. Okay, awesome. Well, thank yeah. you so much, man. Thank I really you, appreciate man. it. Okay.